A picture is worth a thousand words, and so can be said with data. And so in this video, I will be giving you the five top data visualization library in Python. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. And so the first library for data visualization is, of course, matplotlib. So matplotlib is probably one of the oldest data visualization library for Python. And it has a wide range of functions for you to visualize data in all sorts of ways. And so in all of the websites for the five data visualization libraries, all of them will have a gallery. And so for example, if I click on examples here, I will see all of the possible plots that I could make using matplotlib. And so on the right hand side, you can see a table of contents, which you can click and it will jump to the one that you want. So here, we're just gonna scroll down. So it has bar charts, lines, even histogram and scatter plot fuse into one. Okay, so this is contours and also for images. So contour plot is pretty good in allowing you to visualize three-dimensional data, whereby the X and Y are indicated here, and then the Z dimension is indicated by the data samples that you see, along with its corresponding colors. And then this is for customizing the various axes, labels, making a multi-plot figure, adding text to the image plot, arranging the image plot as a grid, and also a lot of plots for statistics. And of course, there's the pie plot and the polar chart as well. And they provide you some examples on how to create all sorts of annotated image plots, how to add latex into the image plot here, so all sorts of annotation examples and also how to work with colors in the plot that you're making and so as you can see there's a lot of things that you could do with matplotlib even animated histograms as well okay so i'm just going to scroll it because there's so many plots as you will see here even 3d here 3d contour plots okay Actually, if you are interested in any of the plots here, just click on it. And then, and so it will provide you the example code to get you started in creating the plot indicated here. And so I would normally just shop for the image plot that I like, look at the example, and then replace the example data with my own data. And you could also download the Jupyter Notebook of each of the image plots to your own computer and customize. Okay, so this is matplotlib, and it's a pretty good library for data visualization. So let's hop on to the next one, Seaborn. So Seaborn, in my opinion, looks a bit better than matplotlib. I think it's because of the color scheme in that it resembles that of the ggplot2. As you can see here, the coloring scheme looks amazing. So let's have a look at the gallery. So the gallery is not as extensive as that of the matplotlib. But it does have quite a few standard plots that you would need. Let's click on one of them. And similar to matplotlib, it provides you the example code that could get you started to reproduce this. If you're interested in a heat map, you can make it. Just follow this example. Just copy and paste it into a Jupyter notebook and then replace the example data with your own data but also to compare and have a look at their own data sets and your own data set. Are the shape similar? If not, then you have to reshape your data so that it resembles the one in the example here so that it could plug and play and work with the plots from the example, right? So there's quite a lot of things that you could do here. And the great thing is they also provide the tutorial as well. So let's click on that. And they did a pretty good job in categorizing the tutorials into making the basic plots, making a multi-plot grid, and also to take a look at some of the data that it accepts, whether the data is in the long form or in the wide form. 
and also to customize the various aesthetic of the plot. Like for example, by default, you will see that it provides you a gray background like this one. But you could also make it into a black and white, right? Like with the black outline here and the white background. So without the major grid, minor grid as shown here, just a plain gray background or a plain white background or even a white background with a grid line, a horizontal grid line. Okay, let's go back and have a look at Matplotlib for a short moment. And it also has a tutorial session as well. And it categorizes into different levels like introductory level, intermediate level, advanced, and also how to customize the colors. Okay, so both Matplotlib and Seaborn, they're quite similar in that the plots that you will create are pretty static, meaning that usually they're not interactive. By interactive, let me show you what I mean. Let's have a look at Bokeh. So Bokeh, Plotly, and also Altair, they're interactive. For example, if I hover the mouse, you see that there is a number appearing, 15746. If I change the hover to a new location, the number changes, right? 41097, if I move it again, the number updates. Plotly also, let's have a look. So it's interactive charts. Let's have a look here. Let's click on one of them. So you can see here that when we hover the mouse over a, a data point here, we get to see the numbers displaying, like total bill of 18.71 with a tip of four. And it updates interactively, even on the line, the trend line here. Same thing with Bokeh. It's also interactive as shown in the examples here. Let's have a look at some of the example plots. And right here, it's quite amazing in that it looks quite a lot like Shiny. And as you can see here, it's inspired by the Shiny example of the Shiny Movie Explorer. And so all of this resembles Shiny, the one from the data visualization package in R. Let's have a look. So if you hover on it, it updates itself. And the panel here is also interactive. So this is awesome. So you update here, the data gets updated. Okay. Let's have a look at the documentation. So there's a lot of different plots that you could make and they're all interactive. See, if you hover onto an area here, you get to see the name of the county updated for Texas. And the corresponding is the example code. And they also provide you some tutorial as well. And it's linking out to a vendor, which will spin up a cloud notebook, which will allow you to interactively use this bokeh notebook. Let's have a look. It's loading up, loading. Okay. Do we need to run it? Let's try it. Okay. So it doesn't seem to show the example plot for us to see. Maybe it's loading. Oh well. So they do provide you with the tutorial, which should be interactive. And so you could click on a topic of your interest and follow along in their tutorial. And let's have a look at the Altair. So this is also another data visualization library in Python that is interactive and it looks quite good as well. Let's have a look at some of the example plots. So it's quite similar to Matplotlib in that it provides you a catalog of the example plots that you could generate. And the color is quite vibrant as well. Scanner plots, histogram, maps. Maps are pretty awesome here. Interactive charts as well. And also some case study examples. So they're pretty much the use of Altair in actual data sets or public data sets. 
like London tube lines or Seattle weather interactive data visualization or looking at the carbon dioxide concentration and also some other example charts that they have created here. Pretty much miscellaneous, okay? And so there you have it, five top data visualization libraries for your data projects, data analytics, data science, data visualization. And so in conclusion, as previously mentioned, Matplotlib and Seaborn are data visualization library that will allow you to generate static plots. But then the other three consisting of Bokeh, Plotly, and also Altair allows you to create interactive plots that you could zoom in, zoom out, or hover to have a look at the data labels. And as shown in the demo of Plotly and also Bokeh, both are quite similar to Shiny in that it also has a web component, meaning that you could create a web application using Bokeh. As you will see in the prior example, they have created a mimic of the Shiny Explorer here. And also Plotly is deeply integrated with Dash. So you could generate a dashboard that will showcase some of the plots interactively. And so let me know in the comments which library is your favorite. And if you're finding value out of this video, please give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And until next time, happy coding.